Good day Grade 10s. Today we are going to learn about working with vectors in one dimension. So let's watch this cool little video on adding and subtracting vectors. Hello and welcome to this lesson on vectors. We're going to find out how we can add vectors together and how we can subtract one vector from another. I'm assuming you've seen and understood the previous lesson on vectors. So, there's quite a lot to get through and I don't want to fry your brain, so the lesson's been split into three parts. This is part one. We'll cover some general points, then we'll find out how to add together vectors that are parallel and vectors that are anti-parallel. Then we'll find out how to subtract one vector from another, with the vectors being parallel or anti-parallel. Part two will be about how to add and subtract vectors of arbitrary direction. That means there can be any angle between them. They don't have to be parallel or anti-parallel. Part three will be about adding perpendicular vectors using Pythagoras' theorem to get the, the magnitude of the new vector and the tangent of an angle to get the direction of the new vector. So that's quite an important one. Let's start with part one. Some general points, first of all. If you're going to add or subtract vectors, the vectors must be the same type. You can't add a velocity vector to a force vector. You can only add a velocity vector to another velocity vector. If we add some vectors together, the sum of two or more vectors is a new vector. And it's the same type as the ones we started with. And the sum is called the resultant. Important word. So, for example, if we add vectors A and B together, the sum is called R. R is the resultant. If we subtract one vector from another, again it gives a new vector. We call that the difference. And the new vector is the same type of vector as we started with. So, if we've got vector A and B, we could work out A minus B. And that would give us D, which is the same type of vector as A and B. It's called the difference between A and B. Finally, vector addition and subtraction do not involve the lines of action of the vectors. I hope you remember what lines of action are. But if you don't, don't worry, because I'll go over this point again in a minute or two. The lines of action don't affect the addition or subtraction. Let's start with about the simplest possible problem. We're going to add two parallel vectors. Suppose we've got an object shown in blue with two forces acting on it. 100 newtons and 200 newtons, yellow and red. These could be the forces from two ropes, a rope at the top, a rope at the bottom, and the forces are both to the left. And the question is, what is the resultant of these forces? If you want to think about that for a moment, you can pause the video. I'll tell you in a moment. And I hope you got the answer 300 newtons to the left. If you're drawing that with an arrow, the length of the arrow is equal to the length of the yellow arrow plus the length of the red arrow. 300 newtons to the left. Fairly intuitive, I hope only applies to parallel vectors. We just add the magnitudes together and we get the direction from the direction of the vectors we start with. Another way to look at this is to say, let's draw the vectors end to end. It doesn't matter which we start with. If we have the yellow vector here and the red vector here, I've got the tail of the yellow one in contact with the tip of the red one. The new vector the resultant will be the vector from the tail that's unconnected to the tip that's unconnected. Let me show you. It's that. And you might say, well, that's a bit obvious. Why bother? Well, I'm showing you a technique that we're going to be using later. In part two, when we add vectors of different directions, this is how we'll do it. We'll draw the vectors with one tail touching the other's tip, and that allows us to work out the resultant. Let's talk about the lines of action. 
if we add or subtract vectors, lines of action don't matter. In other words, 100 newtons to the left plus 200 newtons to the left is always 300 newtons to the left. Let's go back to our diagram. The yellow force has a line of action. I could draw a horizontal line passing through the arrow. The line, in principle, extends indefinitely to the left, indefinitely to the right. It's a line of action of that force. The force in red at the bottom has its own line of action. I could draw a horizontal line so the arrow lies on the line. And the resultant will have its own line of action. Draw a line through it. Let's go back. We don't say anything about lines of action when we add vectors. We just add the magnitudes or combine the magnitudes and work out the direction of the resultant. However, if we know the lines of action of A and B, we can find the line of action of the resultant. It is possible. And the way we do that is by using moments. Now, that's not part of the current topic, so we're not going to be talking about it. But, go back to the diagram, if I wanted to know where the line of action of the resultant is, is it near the top or the middle or the bottom, exactly where it is, there is a way to work it out using moments. But we're not doing that now. So all the calculations on addition and subtraction, the lines of action just aren't relevant. So can we come up with a simple rule for adding parallel vectors? Yeah, here it is. A plus B is R. The magnitude of the resultant is the magnitude of the first vector plus the magnitude of the second vector. And if there were more vectors parallel, we could continue that. The direction of the resultant is simply the direction of the vectors we're adding together. That's only true for parallel vectors. Now let's talk about anti-parallel vectors. Here's an object. It's got two velocities. V is 7 meters per second to the right, and U is 25 meters per second to the left. And you might say, well, how can something move in two directions at once? Well, this could be U standing on a train. Then you decide to start running along the train corridor at 7 meters per second to the right. But while you're running, the train might be moving at 25 meters per second to the left. So you are actually moving in a way which is a combination of these two velocities. And we can ask, what is u plus v? We can add these two vectors together, like any two vectors can be added. So if you want to think about that, what is the total velocity? What is the resultant of these two vectors? If you want to pause and think about it, you can. I'll tell you, tell you the answer in a moment. Let's go over the answer. First of all, the answer is u plus v is 18 meters per second to the left. There are different ways to think about this. One way is because the vectors are in opposite directions, the 7 meters per second partly cancels some of the 25 meters per second to the left. In fact, it, it cancels out 7 of those 25, leaving 18 meters per second to the left. That's one way, fairly intuitive way of thinking about it. Incidentally, the meaning of the answer, 18 meters per second to the left, is that's your velocity in the train relative to the ground. However, that's not the issue here. We're just going through the mechanics of how to add vectors. So this is one way to do it. Here's another way. Because it's a one-dimensional problem, motion in a line, we can assign a sign convention. We can say going right is plus, going left is minus. So V will be plus 7 meters per second, and U will be minus 25 meters per second. The minus tells us we're going left, according to our sign convention. In this case, it's dead easy. U plus V is 7 plus minus 25, which is minus 18 meters per second, treating negative as going left. Another way to do it is to use the drawing trick we mentioned a moment ago. We can draw one vector and then draw the other vector so its tail is next to the first vector's tip. That's what I've done here. And then the resultant is the vector from the unconnected tail 
to the unconnected tip. That's from here to here. Let's draw it. Looks like that. So, that's how we can add anti-parallel vectors. Is there a general rule for adding anti-parallel vectors? Is A, is B anti-parallel to it, and that's the resultant. How do we find the magnitude of the re resultant and the direction? Well, the magnitude of resultant is simply the largest magnitude of A and B minus the smallest magnitude. Go back a slide. The largest magnitude is the 25. Ignore the minus sign, it's magnitude. Magnitudes are positive. So the largest magnitude is 25 because it's bigger than 7. 7 is the smallest magnitude. So largest magnitude minus smallest magnitude gives us 25 minus 7, which is 18. So the magnitude of the resultant is smallest magnitude, sorry, largest minus smallest magnitude. How about the direction of R resultant? Well, it's simply the direction of the largest vector. In this case, the largest vector, the one with the biggest magnitude, is U, with its value of negative, it's pointing left. So the direction of the resultant is to the left. It's the direction of the biggest vector. OK. Let's talk about how to subtract vectors, if they're parallel or anti-parallel. Luckily for us, grade 10, subtracting vectors is not in the current curriculum. All that we need to know is that when we are adding, we're always adding vectors. So if they're in the same direction, it means it's a plus, plus a plus. And if they're in opposite directions, there are a plus and a minus, just like we showed you. That's why we said subtracting now. But the subtracting vectors he's talking about, we're going to be looking at in grade 12. So we will do that um, when we get to grade 12. I hope you now know how to add vectors in one dimension. Please practice and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Thank you, grade 10. Enjoy your day.